Hey guys, it's uh, Stein Brook from Stein Air again. Another question I get asked often is, uh, what do I get if I order an instrument panel from you guys, or what can you do for me? So I thought I'd take another few minutes and tell you about a few of the things that we do here. Um, again, I've got the camera in my hand, so I'll try to keep you all from getting sick and keep this as steady as I can. But uh, looking at in front of us here is just a simple instrument panel we've just cut out and done some of the initial metal work on. We cut our own panels from scratch on a CNC we have back in our shop. This would be the example of an RV79 tip-up canopy um, instrument panel with Garmin uh, G3X displays in it. You can see we've got all the holes cut. We've got uh, all the, the holes drilled for the bow that goes around the top behind the instrument panel. We will put that on before we're finished. Same with the radio stack. We'll be mounted here. There'll be rails that go in here that hold the radio stack. On the back of the instrument panel, you can see we've put in uh, nut plates to hold the EFA screens in. Sometimes we use nut plates and sometimes we use the pre-made mounting rings from Garmin. Depends on the scenario um, and what the customer has requested. Over here is holes for the ELT and some 12 volt cigarette lighter plugs. Um, over on the left side will be the backup Dynon EFAS and uh, TrueTrack Autopilot. And uh, some cases, this is all we do. We just cut an instrument panel out for you for a couple few hundred bucks, depending on how complicated it is. We'll just make you a new instrument panel, custom size to uh, how you, whatever you want. We make it on a slightly thicker material than Vans does. We also put a slightly bigger bend on the bottom so that you can mount things to it. Uh, you'll see we've got holes drilled here for nut plates for things like throttle brackets and uh, USB ports and uh, things like that on this flange on the bottom that we put there a little bit bigger than standard. We can also cut you out just plates for your panel if you have a modular panel. These are plates for various pieces of an instrument panel um, that has modular uh, uh, plates in it. Um, these are switch mounting plates for switches for the Honeywell AML rocker switches, uh, various things like that. We'll come around here to this next bench and we'll see an instrument panel that a customer started on and we're going to finish it up for him. This is an instrument panel that had a hole cut out for two Garmin uh, small screen 3X and we're going to put in the large new touch screen. So we're doing some metal work on it right now. We're putting in a new mount, we're going to put a new plate in there and by the time it's all said and done you won't even notice the difference. Uh, this one's going to be painted kind of a burgundy color. We're just putting labels on it right now. You can see these are the labels as they're getting put on. Um, they look like this, but then we clear coat over them and the Mylar carrier kind of melts away and you're left with these just beautiful labels, these white labels that go on there. In this case, we're wiring up the avionics ahead of time. <clears throat> the customer's going to assemble it himself and uh, put it in the airplane. And uh, bear with me just a second. We'll walk over to another bench over here and take a look at another instrument panel. This is one slightly further along. This is for an RV6 um, that is getting a brand new instrument panel put in it with Dynon screens. These are the large Dynon screens. And you'll see the panel is face down right now. These are all the switches. You'll see there's labels for every switch. We'll heat shrink those when we're done. But there's switches there. You can see the starter, landing light, taxi light, uh, cabin lights, all kinds of different things. There's an intercom and uh, a radio, a Dynon radio. Uh, these are the circuit breakers over here. This is a very nice, simple VFR panel. We've created a relay deck for the guy. This is where his main power will come in. The avionics relay is here. And uh, all he'll do is run a fat wire over here from his battery relay and we've got everything else wired up. So put that in, hit the start switch and uh, you're ready to go. These are the leads that go out to his autopilot servos. You can see that one's labeled pitch. The other one will be labeled roll, of course. And then there's various wires for the grounds that are going out and uh, lighting dimmer wires and power wires and things like that. This is a very simple panel. We'll go in the airplane very easily. Shouldn't take the customer long at all to install this and save him a lot of wiring work um, on putting in the instrument panel. And then we'll walk over a second and look at a completed instrument panel. This is an RV10 panel with the uh, smaller screen Garmin 3Xs in it. And you can see this one's not quite finished, but it's just about done. And uh, it's sitting here running. We've got the switches wired up. We've got boxes that generate signals so we can test this all out. We'll reach over here and turn on the avionics switch and uh, get the avionics on here. We've got the dimmers hooked up so we can dim the switch lights down, um, brighter dim. 
all the switches are labeled. These are nice uh, lighted rocker switches. The neat thing about these Honeywell switches, um, I know a lot of people like these new large automotive looking switches, but these Honeywell ones are quite nice in the fact that uh, you can pop the cover off if you want and uh, get right to the light bulb that's inside of them and change it. It's just an LED light bulb. And you can also have different colored operators put on them and different labels put on them. And uh, they're just a very nice, robust, high quality switch that's frequently used um, in higher end uh, stuff. They're not cheap, but they're very good switches. You'll see when we have the avionics installed, we have them all up, we have them all tested, we, we uh, hook them all up, we plug in headsets, we make sure everything's working. We run it through a bunch of tests to make sure the uh, GPS and ILS and VOR and everything else is working. We test out the autopilot, we test out the intercoms, we test out the EFASs. We do all the setup work for you, all the programming, all the things like that. Um, even can test out the carbon monoxide tester that's or a detector that's down there. This one has a Hobbs meter in it. Circuit breakers are all here um, labeled. You'll see this one's, this is what it looks like after it's finished labeling wise. Um, all cleaned up really nice. Nothing left except the label. This has got a clear coat over it of a, a satin finish. Not very glossy but not dull either. Just in between. Here's the ELT and the passenger warning. This is a carbon fiber panel from Aerosport Products that's a painted one. We've also done them in clear coat, uh, multiple colors, whatever uh, people choose for their finish. This is going to have a throttle quadrant in it. In the pedestal you'll see here some more switches. And when we have it finished, we have everything wired up and tested. Here are the autopilot servos laying here with their cables going out. Underneath this you can see the relay deck for this airplane. You'll see just one power wire coming over from our power supply. Everything else is already done. Customer will just mount this, run his fat wire over it. That's it for power wires. Now I'll walk around to the back of the panel and show you a few things on the back of the panel. Customer will have to uh, hook up all of his ground wires. So you can see we have them all coming out temporarily on a ground bus here. And this is for our testing, but we'll leave these all here and the customer will go mount these on his central grounding point. This is the remote mount transponder sitting here. The customer will mount. He's told us where to put it. So we've made the appropriate length cables to it and he'll mount the transponder appropriately. Same with the engine monitor box. There's the engine monitor box finished up. We have all the uh, harnesses ready to go into the engine monitor box. They are right over here. This is the harnesses for the EGTs and CHTs. And you can see these will already be labeled EGT 1, 2, 3, 4. CHT1234. This is all of the probe and sensor wires going out for various things like there's the flat position wire, uh, there is the fuel quantity, uh, there's elevator trim wires, all the stuff that goes into the uh, probe and sensors for the engine monitor and the box will go in here. This is a finished up Garmin one of course. Here's what the back of the circuit breakers look like. This one has uh, two buses. You can't see it very easily, but if you look over here, you can see a split in the buses right there, the copper bus bars. We've got these all wired up and ready to go, done and tested. Here's the wiring for the radio stack. You can hear the uh, 750's cooling fan running on its own right now, but this is the wiring on the top here is the audio panel. This is the wiring for the audio panel. It's some of the most important wiring in the airplane that you have to really be uh, careful of. This is the remote mount audio panel for the Garmin that sits behind the panel so you don't see any of it, but still the wiring is quite complicated. This entire bundle is for the audio panel, so you'll see that. The next one down is the Garmin 750 GPS. That's a certified uh, WAS GPS box. Then on the bottom is the uh, Garmin Com radio. And way back in here you can see the uh, Garmin Autopilot module hidden. It's just a tiny little thing. Just like these Garmin screens, they do not stick out very far at all. That's only an inch and a quarter through the back of the panel. You'll notice on the back of the panel we have all the nut plates already installed, the mounting rails for the avionics, all the plates are already installed. The customer will just uh, take these screws, they'll line up perfectly with his RV-10 and bolt this frame in place and uh, it's ready to go. No metal work for him at all. This is the switch wiring over on the right side. You can see the back of the switches down there. The daisy chain of yellow wires is the dimming lines for the, the light inside the switches. This is the Adahars module. You'll see this needs to get mounted somewhere in the airplane. It can be mounted, he's going to mount it on the sub panel like this, vertically. 
and then run pedo and static and AOA lines to it. That way it's nice and close to the only other device that needs pedo static AOA, which is his backup uh, Dynon EFA system that's here. Customer will also have to mount his air ink module on his sub panel here. And his compass for the Garmin right here goes out in the wingtip in this case or back in the fuselage. The remote compass for the Dynon will also go on the back of the airplane. The ADSB module will go back there. This is the outside air temperature probe ready to go. And then there's a few other things that we've put wires on here ready for the customer to run. This one's for the pitch trim. Um, this one's for the autopilot disconnect for the sticks. This one happens to be for roll trim. To run out to the roll trim motors. We've got all that finished. If we had the stick grips here, we'd probably wire those up. Uh, we can do all kinds of different things depending on what you want. Also, if you want big cannon plugs on the side, we can do that. We used to do that all the time. We do less of that now because we found just leaving the customer wires to run out is much, much easier for you to install just to uncoil the bundle and put it out there. For example, on the autopilot, we've created a little box. This is not a Garmin device, it's a Steiner box, but it's a splitter for the autopilot system. So you can mount this box, put in your roll servo lead ahead of time, and uh, if you're building the wings, and then plug in the pitch servo later and just plug into the CAN bus on the G3X, it works really, really well. That way you're just left with uh, two different coils of wire, a roll coil and a pitch coil, and that's it. So that's just a very quick overview or not so quick overview of uh, what we do with instrument panels here. Again, everything from nothing to everything and everything in between, it can cost you zero dollars or many, many, many thousands of dollars depending on what you want to do. So if you have any questions, feel free to email us or give us a call. The website uh, is www.steinair.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.